everybody. Happy spring. Today we're going to be painting a really pretty little spring scene. And this painting is very interesting because you get to explore a bunch of different layers. And layers is really fun in painting. So if you look at this painting in particular, the, there's a lot of depth to it. So what we have in the background is sky, which is really far away. And then moving forward, we have some branches and we have some flowers in front of the branches. And then finally we have this cute little birdhouse in front of the flowers. So there's a lot of different layers in this painting. But I'm excited for you to give it a try. This is suitable for maybe ages eight and up. Um, moms, you should try it too, or dads even. Um, it's quite a lot of fun. So let's talk first about what you'll need to pick up for supplies. Now hopefully you already have some of these colors at home so you don't have to buy them all. But we'll just talk quickly about what you're going to need to pick up. The colors I use come from Dollarama, and um, whenever I refer to those specific colors, for example, tropical blue, that means it's just the Dollarama tropical blue, but any blue that's similar is going to work fine for you. So you'll need your canvas, you'll need a plate, disposable or otherwise, to work on, you'll need a large brush and a small brush. And hopefully your small brush has got a nice little point at the end and it, that your small brush hasn't been uh, misused. So that it has a really nice point for that fine detail. It's helpful to have a little piece of chalk. And if you don't have chalk, a pencil will be fine. So now we need to talk about our colors. So again, this is Tropical Blue from Dollarama. We're going to need our white and our black. We'll need a cinnamon brown or any other dark brown that looks similar to that. So cinnamon brown is for the branches and the birdhouse. Um, also there's a tan, which is really good to have. If you are really stuck and you don't have a tan, you can actually experiment with making a tan out of a brown and a white. But honestly, what's easiest is just to pick up this bottle if you're going to the store anyway. We've got some little green leaves here, and for those, I've used Christmas green from Dollarama, and I happened to have kind of a, like a spring green mix, a really fresh spring sort of green. So if you can find one of those, I'll pick that up too, so that you've got a dark green and a light green. However, that's kind of optional, dark and light green, um, because you can make a light green if you have some yellow or some white to add to your green. Um, it's just really handy to have one of each if you can get that. Lastly, we've got um, the centers of the flowers and the flowers themselves. So you can see on the sample that I've done pink centers. So I've got a, a bottle of pink paint. And obviously if you only have red, you can make some pink out of red and white. And you could also put yellow in the centers. Like I would kind of dig around in your paint box and see what you've got because yellow looks really nice in there too. And on that note, um, my flowers are white, but you could make your flowers yellow. You could make them pink, you could make them purple. So it's really um, good to have some fun with that to make it your own piece. So I'll be demoing the white, but you can do, you can be very creative there with the colors that you have. So head out and get all those materials and I will meet you back soon and we can start our painting. Let's get started on our background. So when you're painting something like this, the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, what is the farthest away? And that's what you paint first. So the farthest thing away from us in this painting is the sky. So I'm going to be showing you how to make your sky go from dark to on the edges to light in the center. Um, you could just paint it all solid blue. but I think we can be a little more artistic than that and we're just going to variegate the background just a little bit. So what you'll need to do is give yourself some tropical blue and some white and it's about equal amounts of each and you'll notice that these are only about the size of a loony. You don't need to take too much. So let's start with the outsides of our painting. So what we're going to do is imagine a, a circle. I guess this is more of an oval. Right? But if it helps, you can even sketch that in with your paintbrush, that oval shape. And then we're just going to paint the darkest blues around the very edges. I'm going to press right out to the edges 
and just make sure that when you sit back from the painting, it looks like there's a, an oval in the center. Be careful not to do this. A lot of people paint the corners like that for some reason, but it's the opposite. So you gotta be looking at the, the white space in the middle and it should resemble an egg. Okay, so I've gone all around in the corners and on the edges, like they don't quite meet each other here, but they do here. Um, all of this doesn't really matter. It's just a, a blended effect that we're going for. So as long as it looks relatively like this, you're on the right track. So now what we have to do is make our color lighter and lighter as we go into the center. And that's what you've got your white for. So what I like to do is grab a big scoop of white, mix it into my leftovers. And then what you'll get is a tint of the same blue. So tint is a fancy art word for the, what you get when you add white to a color. So we have the same color, it's just a lighter shade of that color. So I'm going to put that inside. So we're still following that same egg shape. So don't get lost in that, you're going to want to sit up tall from your painting and make sure that you're finding an oval in the center. So you can see how the tint is working there, like they're, they're just slightly different from each other. So when that's finished, it's really important that we blend them, otherwise we're going to have a bullseye, and that's not going to look super good for this guy. So to blend, you want to make sure that you just kind of sweep over where the two meet each other until they blend into each other. You have to do that right away, because as soon as the colors are dry, you can't blend them anymore. So you want to get in the practice of doing it really quick. So let's continue making it lighter as we go into the center. So what I'm gonna do now is take another big scoop, mix that into my leftovers. So what we've done is created another tint of this original color. And that's gonna go in the center again. So blend as you go. The worst thing you can do is let that dry out and have a bullseye in the sky. So I'll show you this close up. You can see that line there. You don't want to leave that there. So this is where right away we do that sweeping motion all around where the two meet each other so that you don't get a line. So there's your beautiful blend. Double check that you've blended everything nice and smooth. All right, let's do two more tints. I'm going to add some white. Once more. And be very careful to blend it as you paint. If you wait till the end, it might dry out on you. So that's our fourth tint already. And then this will be the last one. So this will be the lightest shade right in the center. And again, I'm going to blend it really well. <clears throat> now, almost all of what we've just done is going to be covered by the next step anyway. But if it looks relatively like this, you will be good to go. There we go. So there's like a nice, um, a nice blend, a nice ombre, light in the center and dark out at the edges. So that's going to be your first layer. And you can see that when you look at the sample, how nice it is back there. So what we want to do now is let this guy dry because we don't want to be painting branches over wet paint. So take this time to get your brush nice and clean. Always take really good care of your brushes. Give it a clean and when you think it's clean, just clean it even more, maybe with a little bit of soap. Um, and then you'll make sure that you can use that brush for a long time. So let's get those brushes nice and clean and I'll meet you back for the next layer. Let's double check that the background is nice and dry. That usually takes about five minutes. And if it's dry, you're ready to start on the next layer. So we said that the sky was the farthest away. What's next after the sky is going to be these branches. All right, so they're the next layer. And I always like to draw in canvas on chalk first, because if you make a mistake, it's just so easy to take it off. I just rub it off with my sleeve and it's gone. Um, if you're drawing with pencil, it's a little harder to fix mistakes. So if you've got chalk, use that. But a pencil will be fine too. 
So what we're going to do is start to draw across the canvas. And once we get to the center point, have that line head up off the top of the, the canvas. So across, when you're in the middle, go up off the top. And then I'm going to double that. I'm going to turn that into a Y shape, a Y branch. So then head back to here and we'll scoop it down and have it come off this side. And then I'm going to Y that branch as well. And then do you see this negative space here? It's always good to, to find negative spaces and your eye usually tells you that it wants something in there. So I'm going to add another branch in there. So this is our first set of branches up at the top. Now remember this is just a guide. If yours are a little different, that's totally fine. We're trying to be creative and we're trying to be expressive. So enjoy just doing your own thing if you'd like, but you can follow along with mine also. So starting in the center, we're gonna make a diagonal line. It's gently sloped, just coming from one side to the other. I'll turn that into a Y. And then I'll go to the middle again and pull one more down like that and Y that branch. So that's our second group. And finally, there's just a little bit down here in the corner. So again, I've just gone and cut the diagonal like that from here to there. And I'll make that a Y. And then I just pulled up a little Y here just because I wanted, when it was finished, I wanted to add a couple flowers in this negative space. So once that's all drawn on and you're happy with it, we're going to start um, to paint those in with our cinnamon brown. So take a minute to, to fiddle with that. You can fix any mistakes at this point, but when you're ready, we'll start painting. So this is our cinnamon brown or any other dark brown. And we only need a little bit of that, but we're going to switch from that big brush to this nice small one with the point. And we've talked in other videos about how important it is to keep that nice point on your, on your brush by not um, pounding on the brush and never by squashing the bristles down and twisting it around. Um, if you don't do that, then you'll, you'll maintain that beautiful point and it's the point that gives you this nice detail. Um, you'll have a hard time getting a nice neat line if you've got a squashed brush. So the method for painting these fine details is you just put a little bit of paint on the tip and you patiently and slowly fill in your lines. Now you'll notice that my brush is pointing up um, towards you. It's, it's pretty tall, the brush. And I always tell students that if your brush handle is pointing to the ceiling, you're going to get a nice neat line. Um, if you're painting the way you write, it's not going to be as neat. So if you're holding it like this, you want to switch so that it's standing up nice and tall. It feels funny at first, but um, it's just the best way to paint with one of these small brushes. So we just take our time filling them in. Um, one thing you might want to do is thicken them on the left side so that it feels like um, they've grown from this direction and then they're thinning out as they go across. And really the only way to do a good job here is to take your time and stand your brush up tall. Now it's time to start on all these pretty little flowers because those are the next closest thing to us. So we have the sky, then we have the branches. The flowers are in front of the branches and we know that because you can see that overlapping there, right? You can see that they're in front. Now flowers, there's a couple little things about painting flowers that I like you to remember as you paint them. Um, if you follow the steps, they will turn out just fine. And I want you to be super creative here. So again, if your favorite color is yellow and you wanna make your flowers yellow, go for it. If you wanna make them purple, pink, anything is, is good here. I'm just gonna show you how I did this sample. That's just one of, of many ways that you can do it. So on the sample, the centers I've made pink. And remember, you can make them yellow or green or anything. And then I had added just a little white to them because I thought the pink was just a little too loud. So this is how I made my centers. And then the petals are pure white. So I'm gonna get myself another blob of clean white there. Now here's the best way to paint a flower. Um, before I show you the best way, I'm gonna show you the way not to for just a second. So the wrong way to paint a flower is to start going around like this. 
this is like a Dora the Explorer flower, is not realistic. It's not going to be cool when you're done. The reason it doesn't work very well is once you fill it in, it ends up kind of looking like a just a big circle. Like, do you see how it just looks like a, a cotton ball or a big fluffy circle? Um, and we're missing these beautiful where it goes in between the petals. So don't paint your flowers like this. So now that you know what not to do, here's what to do. I always like to start by putting a center, a mark. This is the center of the flower, and in my case, it's pink, but it could be white. You could even mark them off with your chalk. It doesn't really matter, but put a little something there, and that's the middle of your flower. Next, you're going to pull out five petals that pull, are pulled out from the center. So you always start in the middle and you pull out. And each petal is shaped like an oval. So we start in the center and we pull out one petal, two petals, three petals, four, and five. And do you see how this just looks a whole lot more realistic and natural and just more interesting design-wise than that really bad one that I put down here? You'll see that I I rubbed it off so you can't see it anymore. But when you feel tempted to do that, just stop yourself and say, hang on, we're trying something new. We're, we're gonna try this new method where we do one in the center and then we pull our petals out from there. One, two, and see how they're not really stuck to each other? They're separate from each other. That just makes them look quite pretty. Like they're sort of blowing in the wind on a beautiful spring day. See that? So really important that you keep them this oval shape and don't let them run into each other and turn into a blob. So this step is just going to take you some time. If I were you, I'd put on some music that you like, slow it right down and just enjoy filling that background up with loads of beautiful flowers of all different colors if you like. Be as creative as you want. Um, it's just gonna take some time do it slowly, do it carefully, and um, just keep in mind too, wherever the birdhouse goes eventually, that's going to be covered. So any flowers you put here will eventually be covered. So maybe try to keep them out to the outlying areas of the painting. So have some fun with that step, and I'll meet you back when I'm finished all my flowers. Now that our flowers are finished, we're going to put some of these pretty little uh, leaves that are coming out from behind them. Typically when a tree flowers in the spring, the flowers come before the leaves. So that's why the leaves are very subtle. Like it's almost like some of the flowers are done and a few of the leaves have started to, to open up. Um, but you'll see on the sample, right? They're not big, they're, they're not all over the place. They're just little glimpses of a few fresh um, leaf buds. So I'm going to be using the spring green and Christmas green. And if you look carefully, you'll see that each leaf, the bottom half of it is dark green and the top half of it is light green. Um, that's something you can do if you have two different greens. And if you don't have two different greens, it's probably fine if you just, like if you made all your leaves just that color, um, it would be fine if you made them all this light color just like that, it would be fine too. But if you do have two greens, a dark and a light, that's how I'll be demoing them. So you see how I've done the bottom half of it is dark and the top half is light. Just makes them a little more artsy and creative. And the shape of them, they just pop out every once in a while from behind the flowers. And they're just sort of pointy, they're pointy on the tip and round when they disappear behind the flower. So hopefully that's close enough that you can see how I'm doing them. You might have to work with them, um, getting it to nestle in there between the two, the two petals. But if you've got your brush standing up nice and tall and you're being really careful, you should be able to get all those leaves in there, just like that. Just trying to make sure they've got a nice, pretty little point on the end. And this is how it should look when your leaves are finished. So it's really pretty and you'll see they're all along the outside. And I've sort of left a nice big open area in the center for this birdhouse. Um, keep in mind, 
if my bird has, has to cover a flower, that's totally fine. Like you just go right over top of them. So what we're going to do next is draw the birdhouse on with some chalk. And I'll divide it into manageable chunks for you. And then uh, once we've, we've finished painting the birdhouse, the whole thing will be finished. So this is the last layer. This is the thing that's the closest to us. So what I like to do is sort of find the center and pull the, the string down. Um, and I think it's going to stop right about there. And then I'm also going to draw a rectangle at the bottom. I think that if you base your entire birdhouse on that rectangle, it should work really well for you. Um, there is another option for this, like say you don't like how it's hanging by the string, you could leave the string off and you could paint a post under it instead. So it would look like it was standing on a little wooden post. Um, so you can do anything that you like there. So once we've finished the base, we're going to do a couple of lines coming up from the base that slight, they go slightly out like this. So you see that they're not perfectly straight up, but they go on an angle. That just gives it kind of a cute look. When those are even, we're going to draw the peak of the roof like that. And hopefully you ended up somewhere near where you drew the string. Um, check it for symmetry. One little trick that I always do is if you turn it the other way, um, you'll see better if anything's warped. So turn it different directions, and then you'll be able to tell right away if, if something's off, and you can make a couple corrections there. But that's about all you need for now. Um, hopefully you can see that okay on the video where I've put those chalk lines. Maybe I'll just go over them one more time, a little darker. You don't have to draw them with this much pressure on yours. I'm just, I wanna make sure that you can see that shape really well. And there we are. So we're going to start by painting the darks. In painting, typically we do our dark things first. So we'll do all of our cinnamon browns. So I've put some cinnamon brown. This is the same color that we painted the branches. And I'm going to start by painting in the base. Again, your brush is standing up tall. You've only got paint on the tip. And you're just going to take your time with them, with all this fine detail work. Slow and careful and brush nice and tall. You remember not to pound on your brush and rack the tip. All right, so that's the base. And then I'm also going to see how there's a shadow here. I'm gonna paint that shadow in right away also, just because I like to do my dark things first. There we go. And now we can make this cute little hole in the center. I would recommend just grabbing one of your paint bottles and um, you can trace that with a pencil. The chalk is a bit tricky because it's so fat. So maybe grab a pencil and just go around like that, nice and easy. There's always something close by that can help you draw a circle. So we're gonna fill that circle in also with our dark brown. the branches that still come through and a few of the petals we're just going to run them right over with this next layer they completely disappear when they go behind the birdhouse okay so we're going to move over onto our tan which is pretty much the rest of the birdhouse again if you weren't able to buy tan you can make a tan by mixing white and brown together so for the next step, all we have to do is fill the rest of the birdhouse in with tan, this whole front face, plus the roof. So we made this dark line, but that's the shadow. So the roof itself sits on top of it, like that. So take a few minutes to fill everything in with your tan. All right, so I've finished those two tan areas, right? It's the roof and the 
front face. Um, if you look very closely at mine, and you might have this on your own, I can still see the branch um, coming through that we painted here. Now, if that's happened to yours, what you need to do is let this dry completely. And once it's dry, give it a second coat. Don't attempt a second coat while it's still wet. Otherwise, it's just going to lift up the first coat. So anytime you do a second coat, your first has to be very, very dry. So I'm just going over, over it all once more to cover those branches. So those are the base areas that are all painted in. But when you look at the sample, you'll see this one just has a lot more dimension to it, like three dimensionality. And I'm going to show you how to accomplish that now. Um, and what we're going to need is just a little bit of black paint. And you've still got your white out if you painted white flowers. If you didn't, then uh, just give yourself a little bit of white also. So we're going to be making some tints and shades of brown in order to, to make this look more three-dimensional. Let's start with our shades. I realize now that I forgot to paint in the little, uh, the little string that's holding up the birdhouse. So I'm going to do that now with my dark cinnamon brown. Again, if you'd rather have it on a pole, this would be the time to just paint a dark brown pole underneath. All right, so a couple shades. I'm going to mix a darker shade of um, cinnamon brown by pulling some cinnamon brown off to the side and adding just a little drop of black to it. So now I have what's called a shade of that color. A tint is when you add white and a shade is when you add black. I'm just going to put a little edge of black or of dark brown on the bottom of this. And you see how right away it goes from flat to three dimensional. And that's what we're going to be working with right now. Okay, so we're going to do the same to the inside of the, to the hole there. Do you see how I've mixed a shade, like a dark, a black mixed with dark brown? I've just come along like that. And this just gives it three dimensionality. So it doesn't look flat and cartoony, cartoony anymore. It looks more realistic. So it's sort of like a half moon shape there. Okay, so right away it's starting to, to look much better. We're also going to put a thin line of this right under the roof line to show that there's a shadow there. Just like that. All right, so our shades are finished and now we can do our tints. But I think you'll probably need to wash out your brush before we do that. So let's go get our brushes clean. My brush is nice and clean, and I'm going to take my tan, put a little bit off to the side, and add some white to it. So now I've made a tint of that tan. And I'm just going to put this in two areas. I'm going to put it on the very top of the roof to show that light is hitting the top, and that makes it more three-dimensional. And then I've got it in one more spot, and it's there's sort of a circle that goes around where the hole is. Let's make another tint of that. And it can be subtle or it can be obvious, anything you like. I feel like this one is more subtle than the one on the sample, but it doesn't really matter. At this point, we're just kind of doing our own thing. There we go. And then the very last step is going to be to weather the front of it. So this just looks very plain. We're going to make it look like it's been hanging out there for maybe a year or two in the rain and the weather. So it's getting that nice um, rustic look to it. So the first step for that will be to uh, go back to our cinnamon brown and to create these five lines. So keep in mind that there's only five, right? So we're not going to put a whole bunch of them all close to each other. Really important that they're spread apart. And the best way, I'm thinking here to do five, one, two, three, four, five. Let's, um, let's split it down the center like that. We'll make like one plank in the center with these two lines. All right, see how I did that? So then you could do one or two more here. 
I think just the way mine is turning out, I'm gonna do one more on each side. So this one's just going to have four, four lines and five planks, whereas this one has five lines and six planks. And all of that doesn't matter. What really matters is that you've spread them out evenly and that they're not all crammed together. See how this looks fine, even though it's different from the other one. Um, now that I see that, I think I'm just gonna add one more little, one more little shadow under here. It's sort of like a half moon shaped shadow. I think that adds to the realism of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do all these um, funny shading lines up here. Those are made by mixing tan with cinnamon brown. So it's just a mixture of these two colors. And what I do is I start at the top and I just kind of pull it down until it runs out. So I start at the top and pull down. And it's sort of a scratchy application, like it's not smooth and neat, it's just sort of an effect. So starting at the top and you just sort of pull it down. And at this point, like it's your painting, right? So if you want to pull them down further, you can do that. If you want to add a few, like under here, some people like to add like a little knot hole. You can do that. You can be very creative because it's, it's your painting. So make it your very own. I'm just showing you like a one of many ideas. Like that. You could even add some nails. Um, you could do anything at this point. Okay, so once you've uh, weathered up the front and you're happy with that, you have completed your painting. Um, I'm glad you did this with us. It's fun to be creative. And um, just like always, I would love to see the results. So if you can ask your, your mom to maybe send me a picture of what you've done, I love to see what, what students have created. So happy painting.